All right, 24-hour rule in full effect. We have moved on to northern Illinois. No, we haven't. Let's look back at Colorado first. What happened on uh, Saturday, and what's the hangover like here in Lincoln? Well, a couple of things, Andy. When when you go four straight three and outs out of the locker room when you're up 17 nothing, and then your defense is on the field for 46 plays, 380 yards, it just had a downhill effect. And um, Nebraska really just needed one play last week to lay that knockout blow. And I, I think it comes down to there's just not a lot of players on this roster that have a lot of experience finishing games. I mean, you look at this program, back-to-back -back four and eight years. They're one and one right now. So the, the snapshot of this program has not been good as far as players finishing out wins, knowing how to get it done, and it was a hard lesson to learn in Boulder. We talk about the importance of practice, at least early on. It seems like so far so good for Nebraska in terms of moving past this Colorado uh, game. Yeah, they said all the right things. And I, I think when you look at now moving into this week, a lot of these players were involved in a very similar week two years ago when they lost to Northern Illinois, coming off a road loss at a Pac-12 school in Oregon. Um, a lot of fans went to that game just like this game. So the similarities between 17 and 19 um, – are there and I think this team understands now and respects Northern Illinois you you know they, they talked about just how in 17 guys didn't really respect Northern Illinois they just looked like a bunch of short little dudes and mm -hmm. we're just going to show up and knock them around and they knocked Nebraska around mm -hmm. and I think that was a eye-opening program changing day two years ago it fired Sean Eichhorst led to the firing of Mike Riley and ultimately to bring Scott Frost here so there's a lot of history with Northern Illinois in these last two years. You know, Scott Frost said he did look at the score a couple years ago, didn't really touch on watching that game, but a couple of the players did. Adrian Martinez says he was home in California. And Scott Frost says that Martinez, they will go as far as Adrian will take them. He played much better in week two than week one, but you brought up a good point after the game. Nebraska is going to have to get some more production from their wide receivers, not named Wandale or J.D. Yeah, the, the, the production level there has not been there after that. I mean, kind of I know, and Mike Williams don't have a catch on the season. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Cade Warner returning could be something that, that sparks a little bit. He was playing really well in the spring. I mean, a little bit that we got to see, they like what he brings as far as consistency, route running, catching the football. You know, the play he made at Iowa a couple, last year to tie the game, the two-point conversion. Mm -hmm. So he's somebody that maybe he gets out there, gives him a boost. Jerron Woodyard didn't even travel out to Boulder. So I don't know what's going on there. He's still listed on the depth chart right now. Uh, but the receiver position, to me, is a big concern because more guys, Andy, have to get involved in this offense for Nebraska. That was my stern. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, you better listen to I, I got pretty fired up when there. He Sorry gets about his that. stern voice on, you do not want to disobey. Hey, on the off, uh, defensive side of the football, some bad news for Deontay Williams. Yeah, Scott Frost made that official this week. Deontay Williams suffered a, a season-ending shoulder injury. Say that three times yeah, fast. Yeah, that's tough to say. Um, but Deontay, what's interesting to me is he redshirted a year in JUCO because of an injury redshirted now and so he's used a red shirt still has another year of eligibility is a six year something that they could think about possibly but we didn't even get to that point because right. he's got to play through next year first before you even worry about you know the potential of wanting to get the year back uh, because he's had two full years of college football miss with injuries yeah and on the depth chart really the only two things that jumped out on the defensive side of the football cam taylor Britt, now the starting safety and jojo doman listed as the nickelbacker yeah and, and not a shocker i mean jojo doman had been the nickel a year ago um you know and, and with cam taylor now at safety um, he's not the nickel anymore. So JoJo Doman is outside linebacker slash nickel. Essentially what they do with Doman is when they play teams um, that are going to be three, four wide receiver sets, Doman just stays out on the field. That's kind of the Swiss Army knife linebacker that can play in the box and out of the box. And finally, when we look at the specialists, uh, Barrett Pickering's name has come up, and is, he's not even listed on the depth chart this week. Yeah, that, that situation is dicey for Nebraska. You, know, you think about the field goal situations going forward. I mean, there's going to be some tight games. Mm -hmm. And today, right now, I don't think Nebraska's probably comfortable kicking a field goal outside the 20-yard line. They've got to be in the red zone you know, from the 20 to the 10, essentially, or inside even further, where you're really comfortable with Isaac Armstrong. I think if you put him past the 20, it's – you know, below a 50% chance to make those kicks just with his lack of college football kicking experience. 
Um, so this is not good uh, because you look at how many games Nebraska is going to play, Andy, um, where these point spreads are going to be closer. Points are matter, and they need Barrett Pickering back here sooner rather than later. And finally, you know, uh, Muhammad Barry said something I thought that was telling. He said in a couple months, the, the loss, uh, maybe people won't remember the Colorado loss. They'll remember when they're going to be in Indianapolis. That's his hopeful sign. What do you feel when you hear something like that? And I know what he was trying to say is that, yes, that loss hurts, but really, the Big Ten Championship is still all out there for them. The only parallel I can draw is 2012 Nebraska. They lost at UCLA, mm -hmm. and I remember Kenny Bell said for that game, they want to be back in the same stadium again in January for the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, and then they lost again to at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. They got they got drilled pretty good yeah. by um, Urban Meyer squad that was not eligible to play in Indianapolis. Well, Nebraska. It's and, win out, right? And Bo Pelini was, had the yeah. legendary, I told the team, we got to win out. Mm -hmm. and, and they won all those games in a row. They were all come from behind, close games. I mean, if, if they're able to do something like that, I think you can go back to that Muhammad Berry comment and say, wow, that was a turning point comment. But we've heard a lot of guys make comments mm -hmm. like that. But, yeah, that's the right mentality to have. It has been done here at Nebraska. Um, and that 12 team was the one you know that, that kind of bounced back and made it to Indy. Well, we'll see if they can bounce back. Northern Illinois comes to town first night game in the Scott Frost era. It is Saturday night, 7 o'clock. It's on Fox Sports 1.